Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to 20 Sides to Every Story. I'm Corey. Uh, we are running through Out of the Abyss. Um, the um, uh, And we are a good portion of the way through the Underdark. Um, 20 Sides to Every Story is an online gaming community. Uh, we encourage you to uh, check out our Discord channel, which is active most times a day. Uh, we get in uh, involved in Quite a bit of different gaming styles, whether it's TTRPG, which tends to be our focus, but also um, uh, we do a lot of console gaming, a lot of PC gaming, and uh, things other than D and D. Um, so uh, I encourage you to drop by and, and check this out. Uh, and if you guys uh, enjoy what you see, uh, our patron uh, gives a number of benefits, uh, and uh, they're all explained on the the Patreon page. But it gives access to some of the games we play in general um, and priority to play some of our community campaign games, which happen. Uh, we are just starting up the reboot, um, an advanced copy of the reboot, I believe, of um, Goodman Games' Temple of Ele Elemental Evil, the original adventures reincarnated. Uh, so that starts next week, right, Alex? Uh, no, we got some time. Uh, oh. I think it's like May 14th, I want to say, is the oh, first mid -May. one. Okay, got it. Um, so we have a few weeks uh, and uh, to check out what we're up to. The style of the gaming is drop in, drop out. Uh, and so you guys can get all the information uh, for that through our Discord. Um, let's see. Uh, what and, else to uh, say? Oh, good. One thing, because um, I've done such a bad job promoting it, but we got we, we had a lot of good feedback about trivia night last month, so we decided to do another one. So tomorrow night at eight o'clock central, uh, we're going to be doing another trivia night, and oh, the, the prize for tomorrow night is going to be I picked up this book, the Dungeon Meister. It is a Drink Master's Guide, and it is seventy five different cocktails that that you could put together for uh all of them themed around different tabletop things um maybe my favorite is the tpk which is a <laughs> equal mix of vodka rum tequila gin um and some other good stuff i don't know that i would drink it but if you know some things and you want to play some trivia that could could end up in your mailbox. Um, so come check that out tomorrow night at 8. Ooh. I believe that's also very vaguely similar to a drink called the Mind Eraser, which is similarly <laughs> themed. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so check that out. Uh, and then I'll, before we end tonight, I'll go through the whole schedule of the upcoming days um, so you guys can uh, see. But generally, right around this time every evening, we're, we're up to something on the channel. So um okay so uh our characters our party has uh survived being kidnapped by drow taken down into the underdark to be sold as slaves uh only to escape uh and start trekking across the underdark along their trek uh they uh first sort of stumbled upon uh, demogorgon uh, one of the demon lords newly escaped from the abyss um just wandering around Doing his own thing, uh, so they they turned quickly, ninety degrees, and ran the other way, uh, only to eventually come on to the fact that there was yet another demon lord hopping around, uh, trying to infect the fungus, the various fungus of the Underdark. Um, the poor party is just trying to get home, uh, not be bothered by all this, uh, and they keep running into trouble. So in the most recent place they've gotten to is a place that they know has contact with the surface world. Um, and uh, it is a deep gnome village uh, by the name of Blingdenstone. And uh, they have, uh, Blingdenstone is a place that um, historically uh, once uh, harbored some uh, drow who were fleeing from other drow. Uh, the the in general the drought found out about it and just rained pain on this poor village and basically destroyed it only about 10 years ago a group of very enterprising gnomes came back and started to reestablish this in bits and pieces 
And so what that means is they, they clear out an area, they seal it off, and then they clear out another area and they connect those two areas, et cetera, and they're slowly building. So they've been out there for about 10 years now. Uh, the characters have met the, the two masterminds of this plan um, and they uh, have had a very nice meal. Um, they also, I think, recognize probably every, this is the most friendly place by far that they have um, uh, traveled through uh, in the Underdark. However, they did meet a little bit of a resistance, just a tiny, tiny smidge when they asked if there were maps available. And this is the first time there was a no said to them, to the party. Everything else was basically thrown to them on a plate. But it's clear that the gnomes are so paranoid that someone is going to reinvade them, that that is the one no, no. Um, so, however, uh, the, the gnomes are more than willing to accept help uh, and possibly to change their minds about uh, providing those maps. Uh, and so, uh, the, the party has uh, learned about a couple problems that the, um, um, the Blingdon Stone is facing. The first of which is the problem of ghosts. There's a number of ghosts that defended the village ages ago, centuries ago against the drow, who are just sort of roaming around uh, and still see, see the city as their home. And the, uh, there aren't enough houses to move into that aren't haunted. That's one problem. Another is there seems to be some sort of were rat problem uh, going on to one side of the city. Um, uh, just violence uh, if people try to move into that area by a group of were rats. And a third is, and where we left off last time, is this uh, problem of slimes. Uh, the, the, um, the city has an unfortunate slime problem at the moment. And uh, when we left the, uh, the party, they, um, they were inside the market when they saw two of these slimes ooze out of some cracks and some rubble, uh, capture one of the guards, um, and uh, the party were able to successfully um, kill the oozes uh, and save the guard before he was eaten away by a massive. Uh, and so that's where we left off. Uh, the guard, uh, incredibly thankful for his life. Uh, and so why don't we go around and we um, uh, just introduce your characters, if you would, and we can uh, we can go from there with our first role of the evening. So uh, Alex, do you want to start us off? Yeah, uh, so I'm playing Vic Valentine. He's a half-elf bard. Um, actually ended up in the Underdark uh, having been uh sold by his siblings who have a, a bit of animosity towards the youngest child um vic um is very he has a hard time uh seeing negativity or uh, faults in people he just assumes that he's gonna get along with most people um sometimes they can get him into some trouble um right now he's very committed to everybody finding their way back home um and so um, is ready to do whatever it takes to get these maps so that we can all get out of this nightmare we've been living these past few weeks. Uh, next up, uh, Ethan. Hi, I'm Ethan, and I play Dolphix, who is a gnome fighter. Um, Dolphix uh, was on a journey to find um, a child that he used to tutor, uh, which ended up getting him stuck in the Underdark uh, during that journey. So uh, Delphix is pretty pretty relieved to find uh, his group in Blingdenstone, uh, the city of, of his um, cousins of a sort. So he's feeling a little more at home here and he's willing to help out a little bit uh, as much as we're willing to put our lives at risk um, before heading back up to the surface. Uh, Ed? I'm Ed. I play Jaysa. Jaysa is a, a halfling rogue uh, who, before being uh, find, before finding herself in the Underdark, had been an, an indentured servant uh, forced to fight in gladiatorial combat before. Uh, uh, and then uh, it, the day before her indenture was up, uh, she 
found herself drugged and sold to the drow by her former uh, master of uh, in the fighting rings. Uh, she has since uh, she shares a little bit of uh, of Vic's optimism, but uh, certainly has seen enough of the downside of people that she's a little less uh, less blinded by that. A few are not so much the rose colored glasses, but uh, she has, despite. Uh, all of the, the downsides to being where we are here in the Underdark, it is also the first time in many years that she's felt she had some control over where she was going. And so she's kind of relished it. Okay. Last but certainly not least is Scott. I am Scott, I play Drazzle, who is a lizard folk cleric. He's, uh, he's going through a bit of a, uh, I guess optimism seems to be the theme that keeps popping up and how it works out. and. Drazzle's version of optimism was just every day is as it goes. And, you know, there's nothing to be optimistic or pessimistic about. But surprisingly, in this terrible condition he's been, the differences and the constant changes and the continual survival through it all has made him somewhat optimistic. He's like, he doesn't, we fought ooze yesterday, maybe ghosts, then walking rat people. Ugh, this <laughs> every day gets better. So he finds the constant stress and confusion of it to be really entertaining okay so um what how we're gonna start is actually i need a group uh persuasion check for completely meta reasons well <laughs> we do have rerolls <clears throat> not that it needs to be used here just uh both sides. I think here. we, we each have four, right, at the moment. Yep. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been cheering in the channel too. Uh, by the way, I, I have I only have one screen I'm working from, so it's hard for me to jump back and forth. Uh, thanks for the subscription, Scott. Uh, Cliff, thank you as always for supporting us and Ed as well. Um, okay. Um, so uh, incredibly grateful guard. Um, you see him sort of like the the cloth had already started dissolving away. Some of the metal parts seemed tarnished, but um, he was he was close to being a counter. Um, his, uh, his fellow guardsmen, guards gnomes, uh, pick him up uh, by the shoulders and sort of start walking him uh, to get some, uh, to, to recover uh, and take him to get some aid. Um, you guys uh, here are your standing in uh, roughly where you see you guys so um, here. Oh, are you on the right map? Nope. I'm still on the first splash screen. Um, so I think you guys are there. Um, and so uh, let me just open up some pages. Uh, and is it accurate that we have no light sources? Hmm, probably not. Uh, let me, what, I, what was I going to use? Oh, you have an arrow somewhere. Where did I put the arrow? It's down here. You see now? I see four of us, yes. Uh, Chase, can you? Yeah, yep. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, you guys... Um, you are in the, the Trader's Grotto, um, and it's this is the area that serves as Blingdon, so it's Central Market. market. Um, it's interesting because this, what it looks like it once was, is it looks very similar to the Never Lake Grove. There are mushrooms everywhere, except all the mushrooms are petrified here. So they're like preserved in this stone gray condition. But it looks a lot like, except in places where they've been broken off or people have chipped them away to make paths through them or stalls, things like that. Um, and uh, all around you, you see various makeshift stalls. Um, the um, uh, Yeah, um, one of the guards comes up to you uh, named um, Mevra, and she looks at you and she, she says, um, I, I really want to uh, thank you for, for saving my brother. Um, these things are, are getting worse and worse. 
pretty much once a day we're we're having to take one of these oozes out. Hmm. Well, I'm glad we could be of assistance. Is, uh, after ooze dead, does have use? Is can you use it? You can't eat. It's what do you do? It's just like a sticky substance on the ground. Do you use mop to clean up? Um, she says, uh, well, it normally just sort of goes away. We don't really do anything with it. This is it's not like, like a body uh, or anything. It's just sticky. Just like, uh, you know, I, I presume that you've seen these kinds of things down here in the Underdark a lot, but uh, is this happening more frequently right now? She said, uh, yeah, I would, I would say so. I, I mean, once a day is not normally, normally they don't sneak up on us like that. Uh, that, that got my brother pretty, pretty bad. Uh, um, but normally, and she points to the, the, this, um, so the way they have like quarantined the city, so to speak, is by first blasting rock to form these sort of natural barriers and then eventually building these huge, the mithril doors that were mithril down doors that you guys have seen uh, walking through. And so it seems that these, the natural, the, the rock collapses have worked pretty well for most things like were rats, but these users can just sort of squeeze through them. That's, that's the problem. And so she says, yeah, it's, um, it's uh, I would say more, used to be like maybe once a week, one of these things found their way in, but now, uh, it's been a little more tough. Um, she said, uh, my, my, uh, my captain told me you guys might want to go past the door. Is that where ooze comes from? Then mm -hmm. we go past door. Oozes, were rats, you name it. That's like the, the wild underdark past that door. Oh, Still sorry. part of the city, or what we used to be the city. Yeah, I think uh, we go. I think that sounds sounds like a plan. So she says, uh, oh, give me a minute. Um, so, um, who knows what's behind that door? So uh, we'll, we'll open it up and make sure it's it's clear and then uh, slide you through. And then um, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna really have to get our attention when you're on the other side of that thing. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for you. Um, but just be aware you might be stuck there for a little bit. You have a code word? Uh, we have a code word, but we're not just going to open the door. I mean, we, we don't need a code word. We can hear your voice, but if things are chasing you, we're not going to, sorry to say, we're not going to slip open the door to let those things in. So we're going to make sure that we follow our protocols. Um, So, how um, how how are we producing light? Uh, I believe there's a light spell around. Light spell. I have, okay. I have a couple of torches as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can Drizzle cast. I can cast light on anything, and I usually cast it on my bowl and just have a halo of light circled around me. Okay. If uh, <clears throat> if we need a torch to be held or whatever, just let me know. It sounds like we're good. Good. Um, so you guys, let me just look at the map real quick, see where you guys are going. Okay. Um, so can you see this door here? I can now. Okay. So that's, uh, actually, can you, if I just, do I have to move all of you? Can you see the arrow? Yes. Right, so, yeah. Okay, so I don't need to move, I'll move all of you as needed, but. Um, so opening the door is a little bit of a process and you, you get a feeling for, it's not, it's not necessarily that they wouldn't open the door for you. It just takes work. Uh, these things were made, made to be barriers, not to be doors. Really. Um, and eventually they, they unhook some, some sort of bolts that are, are seal the, the door shut. Um, they tap those out and uh, they, they open up just a sliver um, so that you guys can go in. And as this is all um, going on,
Um, she uh, she says, um, uh, Mevra comes back and she's like, I, 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 I just want to make sure you guys are okay with going past that door. I mean, you guys, from what I've hear, you come across the Underdark. So no offense to you. I'm not saying that you're not prepared for it, but there's some crazy stuff over there. And there's a reason we haven't cleared it out yet. Well, we um, we understand the risks involved, and it's the fact that this is so crazy and no one else wants to do it that we're hoping to build a little bit of capital here to get ourselves home. So this is a this is a risk I think we're all very well prepared to take on. Uh, okay. Um... Not oh. saying we wouldn't take any help if you know you you might have a few of y'all to to spare, but I mean we'll we'll keep an eye out to try to you know from up on the the towers to try to keep you you know as safe as we can. But it's it's well you'll see what I mean. Um, just try to shake them loose before you you run back this way. That's all I'm asking. Uh, and now the the door starts to creak open, and they they really only open the door like this much. Uh, it takes quite a bit of effort to even move the door that far. Uh, and you guys can all head in. Let's see, is there any air lighting going on here? Oh, apparently not. Is there dynamic lighting? Yeah. You guys don't need to move your tokens because it's not anywhere near accurate no. with the scale. So I'll just move the arrow. Or, um, oops. Uh, and you should be able to see from there. All right. So the minute you cross over into this door, and so the door at this point is still open. But the minute you cross into this area, this area, everything is slimy. Like there is slime on the ceilings, there is slime on the floor, there's slime literally everywhere. Um, and you get the feeling that this is a large part of the reason that things have become bad. Like it seems like the slimes were expanding in some sense and then they came to this door. I can't get through it. Um, so um, uh, it's a bit of an unusual place too. Uh, you guys can see, I think, right uh, here. Um, so the um, you're inside one of the bigger caverns you've actually seen, and uh, everything, like I said, covering in this sickening green slime. You can hear echoes of water dripping through the cave. Uh, in the center, you see this weird large spherical structure um, and it's um, it's held off the ground by these uh, by pillars um, uh, around the pillars you see tons of slimes of various forms just crawling not aggressively towards you but they're they're there um, and uh, you see them sort of taking their pseudopods and grabbing them like a rock and then pulling themselves towards the rock. Um, the sphere's surface, exactly like the cave's wall, covered with slime. You see black, black slime swirling with yellow slime to make weird designs on the surface of the sphere. Um, uh, in sort of like a disgusting, soupy, unearthly patterns um, that sort of really like disturb your mind as you stare at them. Um, you hear, um, you hear a voice echo through the cavern suddenly. You know, what's that? What? Visitors? No, 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 not yet. We're not ready. Go away, pests. Uh, and the voice is getting louder and, and a little bit more irate. I will call upon thee and all of Lingdon Stone to announce our glad tidings of the faceless lord to come at the proper time. Begone! 
and then yeah. every, and then it goes back to the weird tripping sound. All of you heard that. Does he talk us? I think we're the only visitors. But him see us or him talk to someone else so we know see? It's possible. Some faceless something. But voice also not just in me in my head, yes? No, I, I can definitely hear it. I heard it. Would any of us know a faceless one? Mm, you can make uh, an arcana check. Let's see, so 19 is the highest from what I see so far. Uh, let me just check one thing out. I don't want to meta this too hard, but would Dolphix be able to make this connection between oozes? And you know, we've, yeah, we've like seen you, a, lot, a lot of weird. You, you guys, you guys are very close to making the connection just naturally. So I'm okay. just making sure that that's one of the common names of the individual. And then, if it is, then I feel like we've seen en enough weird things going on related to demon lords that. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure you have the correct one, yeah. right? Like, I think you automatically know this, a, a demon lord might be causing all of this. Yep, okay, he's definitely, yep. This, everything you know, uh, particularly, who, um, it's probably um, uh, Drezzle and Jaysa who, who really connect, like, Identify, uh, Jubilex, the yearning hunger, the faithless lord. Uninspiring name. Oh, uh, this faceless one. Anyone? We ring any bells? Ooh, um, a bit. There were uh, gladiators who uh, who would don this title. Um, they they thought it might strike fear into enemies and uh, it, it it's another of these demons yeah kind of figured that just by kind of wave all over the place it does mm. seem to be a common theme mm. well um so the door they are starting to push the door closed behind yeah, so, well, typically we run away from demon lords. And, but, uh, but well, we... you are pretty sure that this would be foolish to continue this way. <laughs> like this would, there, there are in front of you at least 100 to 200 slimes yeah. in various varieties. Yeah, this. They're not aggressive, but they're there. Yeah. We found these slimes. I think we call that win for today. I think perhaps we have to reanalyze our situation. There are other gates you could pass through. This was the one that someone recommended to you. Someone who does not like us? No, someone, someone who, who has not been on the side of the gate. Someone right. who knew we were trying to get to the slimes. They were right. Well, mm. if, if anything, this proves that there is a demonic influence in Blooming Stone. We have suspected it. This confirms it. So let's uh, catch that door before it closes. Ah, yes. Um, mm. One moment. So yeah, uh, she stops. She, she stops them, and you squeeze back through. Like it's, it's been halfway closed, but you can you can yes. sort of push your way through. You. And uh, she said, "Oh yeah, um, that looks much worse than I when I, the last time we opened that." Hmm. Well, that's unsettling. Um, did you hear the voice? Um. She said honestly, with the the the, the pushing the door closed. No, she. Didn't. Doesn't mean it wasn't there. She just wasn't particularly paying attention. Oh, you're going to want to keep that door closed. Uh, yeah, they're already, like, once you squeeze through, they're already, like, pushing through. And um, She you. said, uh, well, you may have luck. Um, oops, let me go over to the name of the place. You may have luck. Um, over in that main entry hall that you came in, there's some doors to the north. 
Um, they are going to lead to the Were Rats, another sort of troubling area. Were Rats sound uh, smaller, more our mm. size. Yeah, they're still pains in the ass, though. So I'd be careful. Is there any, like, a uh, uh, Were Rat Demon Lord do you think we have to look out for? You know? See, it's like, um, I would think that was your sort of wheelhouse. I, I'm just guard. Fair enough. Uh, she's like, if you, I, yeah, she's concerned that you said there's a demon lord and she's drawing the conclusion that it might be on the other side of that door. So you see her nervously looking at the door. Well, to be fair, it may not be yet. Um, I think we tell this, we, we think I heard enough that we can tell someone this is bigger problem and will soon be too much problem. Great. Well, maybe we can gather some goodwill by uh, tackling this swear rat problem before we uh, yeah. pop the news. You know? I think that's a good idea. Okay, this door, the, the one to the wire rats. All right, so you guys then head over in this direction, which is where I think, um, over here. Um, and so uh, you start to open, or they start to open it. Uh, and same thing, let me just tell you what the guards know is on the other side of this door. Um, okay, so the guards tell you, like, um, hey, so those were rats, they're, they're crafty buggers. Um, they got lots of traps back there. They like to attack you when you're disarming the traps, even if you know it's there. Um, and there seems to be millions of them. So... Well, let's hope that's an exaggeration. I, I am, yeah, I'm... A little prone to exaggeration, but um, you you guys should be ready. Well, given what we saw in that last door, we're not really sure what's exaggeration and what is true. Uh, all right, so they start opening the door for you. Same sort of process. The only difference here is this is actually a double door. So it's, it's a little easier to open, uh, but then the sort of fixed mithril wall basically was what the other one was. Uh, and so they start opening it, and you move into um, what? and you move into this area. Sorry, here. Um, so give me one second to so. <laughs> as you move into this area the first thing that strikes you is before you left the gates um and this is probably you would have noticed this when you walked into the city this fastidious cleanliness inside the gates and the minute you get outside these doors you see trash like not a lot of it but there's trash at a lot of places around you. Um, uh, you see um, some uh, mushrooms growing normally. So you see some torch, torch stalks and you see the nightlight fungi. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, um, the doors close behind you. Uh, and you actually don't, um, it's actually pretty quiet here. Like you don't see evidence of anything in front of you. Besides the only, the only surprising thing is the, the trash. Is, uh, can I check the trash out? Is it like a pile or is it just everywhere? There's no, trash? it's, it's, it's not, it's not everywhere. It's not like overwhelming. It's just, there is trash. 
Oh, okay. Like that, it, it's like you see like bones, or you see like just like torn clothing, things like that. Does it look? Um, whereas you saw nothing like that inside. Any indications of uh, what died? Is it animal or is it? It pretty much anything you want to find, you can find. Okay. Yeah. Um. So rats or yeah. Well, Jezreel, is there a demon lord of refuse or? I don't think so. I'm I'm looking for. I want to that's look for not, some sort of. That's not one gladiators often adopt. I'm looking for some sort of tracks or anything that I can see of who comes this way, or is this just where they throw their trash? Or so uh, you can make. Um, if you're looking for tracks specifically, you can make yeah. a survival check. But if you're looking to figure out more about the trash, you can do just. Protection. No, I'm I'm looking to see if there's any footprints of people moving around in this area. Um. Yeah, so you see footprints, humanoid footprints um, going throughout. It doesn't seem to be going through a specific area, except there's only one way to leave this area, and that's to the north. Okay. Well, I guess that's where we are. Um, as we walk, I'd like to like feel my eyes open for traps. Or yeah. yeah, I will do the same. Um, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, make me some perception checks. I'm going to die in combat. That's quite clear. Too many high rolls in non-essentials. I wouldn't call looking for traps non-essential. <laughs> Um, I, okay. I'll just so, keep an eye on the the rear rank, more okay. making sure nothing's creeping up on us. Yeah, like it's it's um, at least for now, it's pretty easy, right? Like there's these two doors behind you. Um, sure enough, uh, just moving through this area, you you do start to see evidence of these traps. Uh, I think the very first one you probably find is uh, like a pit trap. Pretty easy. It's it's been covered with some some boards and some sort of larger mushrooms. But the general idea is, if you stepped on it, you would you would fall through. There's no real need to disarm it. In the sense of you can just sort of walk around it, like mm -hmm. it's not. But it's in the middle of the path, so like net, normally it would. Mm -hmm. So, what are you guys doing? That we can continue it. Yeah. Yeah. Does it seem to so, be do we have any ability to infer whether it's a denial of access to a certain area versus just a obstacle to slow people down? Seems like an obstacle of some no kind. sort of intent. Like a defense. Okay. Like it doesn't. So um all right. Uh so you guys can see um similar to what you saw. Uh, I'm gonna move you a little bit here so you can see this. Similar to what was actually in the city proper, you see these things, these dens that go down. Um, you can see um, uh, and Drazzle, you probably smell it most of all. To the east, you smell a lot of garbage. Like it is overwhelmingly rotting stuff is coming from the east. Uh, to the west, I would say you guys see um, uh, those of you would actually I don't I forget what the scale is here. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So those yeah you can see that the it's it's um, it's going up a little bit over here, like it's ascending a little bit. Uh, yeah. What would you guys like to do? You could you could also surmise that to the east probably somehow connects to the slimes unless unless the were rats themselves have uh, um, blocked off something from that right? from the slime area well, I think we should avoid the slimes yeah yeah I think that's a bit out of our wheelhouse at the moment. Which way? The real west. 
So um, as you get closer to here, you guys can see um, a rise on the hill over here. Um, sorry, this, uh, this session is brought to you by allergies, which are terrible right now. Um, so uh, you, you start to see um, at the very edge of these, I don't know if it displays it on the map. Oh yeah, it does. You can, you can start to see um, as you are sneaking through here, uh, you see some constructed stairs leading to the top of this rise, but they are on the north side of this thing. Uh, otherwise, it's only about um, it's only about maybe 10, 20 feet up the rise, but pretty steep sort of slides. Um, and you, how are you guys traveling? Are you being sneaky? Are you being fairly open? What I, are you guys doing? I'm not easy to sneak at my size. I think we stay open. We're probably I think I would watch. sneak out ahead a little bit so I can look for traps. Okay. Um, so, uh, but I can't be too far ahead because I can't see in the dark. Um, you, uh, Jason, as you're approaching, you can hear voices from on top of the rise. They don't. They don't seem particularly aware that you guys are. Okay. Uh, from, are from what you can tell, it doesn't seem like rush. It, it just. Are they speaking a language that I understand? Mm, it's at the moment. It's too hard to tell. You can just. Okay. It's that sort of thing. Like you can hear people talking, but not make out words yet. Um, You'd have to get a little bit closer. I will motion to the group to stop and and uh, come back and whisper to them that I hear voices up ahead. Uh, what do we think? How do we want to approach? Uh, I I think we go to voices openly. Yeah. Voices up up on the ledge. Yes. Well, perhaps we can get an idea of how many there are. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna regret this. I'm Do gonna summon to cheap. Okay. And have have my little familiar like fly up there. Okay. I assume to cheap is trying to do this as stealthy stealthily as possible. Yeah, but it is brightly colored, so. But but it's dark. <laughs> it is dark. I mean, like brightly colored doesn't mean anything in the dark. Um, yeah, so make a, make a, you can make a stealth with advantage with cheap, just because the higher they can go, it's like 150 feet up the cavern size. So. You find it? <coughs> yep, I'm rolling. All right. So, um, so to cheap starts to fly up, and I assume you're observing through senses. Um, and so you can see on on top of here, um, on top of the rise, you can see um, it's actually a well manicured like bed of moss. Uh, sitting on top of which is um, uh, a stone chair uh, with a half-human, half-rat-like creature sitting on the stone chair. And on either side of them are two giant rats. And uh, uh, cheap probably is so intent staring at these things, probably like hits a stone mushroom or something and you hear a chirp, like and everyone looks up and sees this bird up there what would you like to do you're you're aware that they see this bird okay um yeah i'll summon to cheap back to us and okay. snap out so to cheap poofs out um uh, and uh the other thing i would say is you saw past the rise too to cheap saw past the rise and there seems to be a lot like that seems to be a living area of some kind, and you saw a lot of humanoids over there. Like in their wear rat forms, or just uh, what they're humanoids, so it wasn't close enough. But your guess is they looked roughly like what you saw sitting on the road. Okay, well, 
And I think uh, we found where our were rats are residing. Okay. Um, they seem to be led by some sort of uh, leader who sits upon a stone throne, flanked by two giant rodents. I think we go talk to rat peoples. Okay. So as you or any of you doing anything differently? Um, I am going to stealth apart from the group. Okay. So make me a stealth roll. Okay. So um, uh, Jason, you sort of tuck in, excuse me. Um, this also brought to you by allergy medication. The two are fighting inside me. Um, uh, you find sort of a copse of uh, mushrooms to sort of peer out. And Jason, you probably are the first to hear it, but all of you hear it shortly after. There are creatures approaching you. Not from on top of the rise, as far as you can tell. Seems to be around that northern section of it. They're walking in your direction. You guys doing anything? Keep walking, I think. Uh, Toward, towards them, basically? Yeah. Um, so yeah, they. Um, you guys um, are walking around here, and there's this little narrow point that you can see here between the rise and the, the cave walls. And right as you're maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 feet around, uh, you see, um, uh, Dolphix, you would recognize the one from the chair, uh, but there's a number of others around them. The one, um, two look like deep gnomes. One looks like this half deep gnome, uh, half rat sort of this um, this hybrid where rat hybrid form um and um uh, you uh the one you saw on the throne is a little fatter a little meatier than the rest of them and he he looks at the group this group of three of you he does not see you um and actually i should ask is while we're on this is uh eldith and or um darren Dill with you I don't think I don't think we needed them, did we? Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Um, so they uh, looks at the three of you, uh, and uh, with a big toothy grin, um, he he looks um, up and he says, um, uh, "Peace." And he he steps forward, his arms extended and hands open. Nothing is his hand, nothing in his hands. He says, uh, Chipgrin's the name. I'm the chief of the Gold Whisker clan. Uh, shall we talk? Can, I think that sounds we, good. Can we talk and eat? He looks at you blankly. He's like, why don't we talk first? Um, and so uh, he um, he Sort starts to accompany you if you follow him uh, up these stairs and up to the area that you saw earlier. Uh, as you're walking up the stairs over to the west here, there is at least like 40 to 50 humanoids all staring, like we're at in various forms, all just staring at you um, as visitors. Um, so it's a pretty big population of them up here. Um, the wave. Hi. Drazzle. Uh, they all sort of like you see a couple of them waving back at you, but it's it's pretty highly suspicious. Uh, looking at you, uh, and uh, so um, Chip Grin, he uh, he sort of walks up to the chair, sits down, turns around, and sits down in it, and uh, he says, um, "So let's get down to brass hobnails then." Uh, you were sent by the Diggermatics, weren't you, to uh, get rid of us? Um, well, I don't know if uh, get rid of is necessarily the way to put it, but we do understand that there's been some conflict. Well, uh, the good news is 
they're probably going to get rid of us pretty soon. Uh, the bad news is it's probably not the way they want. Is it slime? I think there's big slime problem. Um, yeah. Ghost? Um, it's uh, you know, it's it's gotten pretty bad. Yeah, we uh, saw slime. Too many. So what are what are you, what are your plans for for dealing with this? You, are you are you leaving or are you going to confront? Well, I mean, if we're forced to leave, we're going to leave. We're not going to sit here and stand and fight. Um, those guys inside, they they seem to want to get rid of us, though. They seem to think that we're occupying part of their city that they want to add to the city. But the fact is, there's going to be no city if any points off to the east. Uh, if if the pudding king has his way, pudding king. Yeah, weird guy has lots of slimes. We saw the seems to be able to control them. Mm -hmm. For those of you who rolled earlier, the pudding king is not one of the names of Jubilix. It is now. Bill. <laughs> uh, Well, it's also my favorite part of this. I love the pudding cake. I just hear a terrible southern accent coming out of him. Uh, he's uh, he looks at all of you and he says, "What? You haven't you haven't heard of the pudding king before? Did you know there was a someone not a slime over there? We are new in town. We went there this morning and." Saw slime, heard voice. Uh, that was probably him. He uh, he's been here a while. Um, he used to work here a long time ago when he worked in the tunnels. Um, uh, then he disappeared. And then he came back, and my kin saw him when he came back. Mm -hmm. I uh, I know who he is. Uh, I know what he's doing. And most of all, I know exactly where he, he can be found. Um, this all sounds if, good. If you and the Digger Maddox want, I can take you straight to him. Well, what will happen? We go straight to him. Hmm. What is he doing? Uh, well, that's where you guys come in. See. I'm only going to give you information if some sort of peace is brokered with the Diggermatics. We get to keep this area of the city. So, or, or one comparable where we can live in peace. So you guys work together to fight Pudding and you stay. Well, I don't, I'll, I'll give the information if we're guaranteed a place to, to live. Um, otherwise, we 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 flee, and uh, you all can can deal with this problem on your own. Well, you know we can we can try we can try to uh, negotiate this peace and whatnot. But I I'm sort of gathering that there's a lot of history here. Um, a little bit of goodwill on your part. It's a risk. It's a gamble, but. You know, if you trust us with this information, we take care of it. We that'll that'll give us a little bit of leverage to to speak with, um, uh, the Snurf Neblin. Well, um, I mean, I just told you what I'm prepared to tell you. There's okay. there's a person back there, and a person who the Digger Maddox, they probably know who he is, although, not probably what he is anymore and uh okay. i'm willing to tell you what i know about him and we we see him quite a bit um so i think if we, if we leave the slimes are just going to take over this area and surround that city so you want us carry you message well yeah we can't walk in there they'll kill us That's what they do when we try to go there. Well, again, we can try, but 
seems like this could be a lengthy process of trying to convince them that this is a good idea. And if this guy, this Pudding King that you talk about is growing immensely powerful over time, uh, we might be losing valuable time that we could we could deal with it and help to ensure that you get to stay and not have to flee. Uh, right, but got it. But I, I, we, we've shown goodwill to them. We don't, we don't attack the city. We try to go in the city. We've never tried to harm them. They choose to kill us. So I, 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 I can only accept goodwill so far. You guys are the best choice of a messenger we have at the moment. If you're willing to, to go back and, and talk to the diggermatics, if that's um, if that's the way you want it, I, we don't it's... really have a horse in this race. We will be happy to deliver the message, yeah. but Spe specifically, you don't you don't have to convince them for me. I'm not saying that. What I'm asking is, I'm I'm happy to do the convincing myself. You but... want a Senate meeting? Exactly. We can. Hey, Vic, you should ask about our friends. Maybe he know know of them. From prison. Um, who 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 specifically are you thinking, uh, they, Drizzle? They got uh, attacked by the where rat. Remember story? Oh, um, Topsy and Turvy. Yeah. How they become where rat? How we not become where rat? Um, yeah, I'll bring up their names to see if he knows them. He, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't at all. Um, he, but he does say, um, he says, uh, if they were here, they'd be, you know, they'd be welcome amongst us. We're not, we're not picky. We understand our kind isn't liked other places. Um, Dolphix, he looks at you like he, he's probably been eyeing you quite a bit, like, because you are a gnome. And finally, he says, um, he says, any chance you've noticed anything weird about them in there? Them in where? The, the deep gnomes. You know, the, the ones not like us, the, the other ones. Hmm. Um, well, just uh, whose issue aside? I have been keeping my eyes open for any sign of demonic influence. And while I have not yet found demons. Yes. Just... Oh. Well, I don't know about demons, but I can tell you they seem uh, a little more aggressive and a little more, uh, I don't know, greedy maybe? Normally, um, we all sort of noticed it, and the people up there, the other were rats up there, so they, they sort of nod. Um, we, uh, doesn't seem to affect us, none of us, but uh, on the outskirts, some of the mining south of town, they're getting in fights over stupid stuff, and I, I've never seen that before. Okay. Well, we, we have not been down to the south, south of the town, but that sounds like quite an example of demonic influence, in my opinion. I'm sure my colleagues would agree. Uh, uh. It's all, all the more reason why uh, we must resolve this issue of the oozes in a timely uh. manner. It makes sense to me. Um, well, if you're willing, if you're willing to help me set up a meeting, I, 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 I promise I will um, help you any way I can. Uh, but this is the way I see it: is this is survival of my people, and uh, we we're willing to work with the deep gnomes in there um, if they're willing to work with us. I think we have. 
two messages to deliver to uh, bosses now. Hmm. Not entirely unrelated messages. Yes. Yeah. Well. Maybe we should hurry back. Quite. Oh. Um, all right. Well, um, we got lots of traps around here, so we'll just make sure I'll, I'll send a few of my guys back with you to make sure you don't fall into any of the things. Um, oh, uh, before we go, is there some sort of neutral meeting ground? That we're in, uh, we know inside there is safe. So if they're willing to have us inside, we'll go as long as they're not going to kill us or talk once we walk in. We're, no. we're, we, we trust if they give their word that everything's going to be okay. Fair enough. Uh, so they head back and um, they're like some of the were rats come out like and probably you specifically Drazzle like they're all really intrigued like yeah. this is more diversity than they've seen probably ever um, for all in all parts and so they um, they're sort of happy like you actually have a fairly large group of were rats following you by the time you walk over to the gate and there is a there is a like a hesitation to get anywhere near it um, because fear that someone's going to come out and kill them. Uh, so after a certain point, maybe like 30 feet away from the gate, they sort of leave you. And they're like, no, no traps, no traps up there. You're, you're safe. Um, and they sort of scurry off to the sides to try to hide as they watch you approach the gate. I wave goodbye. See you soon. You guys head to the gate, go back in. Yeah. You clang on the gate. Uh, you you hear some muffled through the gate. You try to communicate a little bit, and uh, you are you are able to. They they open the gate for you. Um, just an inch. They can squeeze through, and then they close the gate behind. The were rats don't seem to do anything suspicious during that time. Uh, what are you guys going to do? I think go to the bosses. Diggermatics? Well, I, after the were rats uh, retreated, I'd have to come out of hiding and join the group. <laughs> um, okay. Where did uh, you you waited until that, that last bit? Yeah, I didn't feel like they were in this conversation. I didn't want to pop out earlier okay. and so you um you pop out. Uh, it's your choice whether or not you want them to see you on the way out. I do not. Okay. So yeah, you 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 actually have to actually probably the group has to wait for you to show up. So they they like the rest of you sort of like hesitate to knock on the gate until Jason reappears. Uh, so but eventually you you get the window and you're able to pop up near the gate. Um, the group of you sort of knock on the door and you you're, you enter it. Um, all right. So uh, you guys start wandering down to the diplomatics. Um, and you're still still getting a little accustomed to this this area. And I don't remember if I described here last time, but you wander into this this section of town. And so this, I don't remember, I, I really don't remember if I described this last time, but this is, this is clearly some sort of temple. There's an altar in the middle of it. You see a, a dressed like acolyte in, in nice robes wandering around trying to keep everything clean. Um, I feel like I did describe this to you. I apologize. I'm just not remembering. Um, and uh, you see um, uh, the dead uh, or sort of a set of catacombs leading into some sort of necropolis uh, down here. Um, and so uh, where, where bodies are interred. So it, looks, it doesn't look like one of the living tunnels. It actually looks like a formal, well-manicured 
sort of necropolis for the dead. Uh, and he's running around. He doesn't pay terribly much attention to you uh, unless you stop him. Um, uh, you head into this area here. Let me just tell you what's in there. Um, here, you see probably the most well-guarded of the gates, which surprises you based on everything you've already seen behind gates. You are actually a little shocked that this one seems to be the most guarded. Uh, and here at this gate, you see um, eight gnome guards, four cave badgers, who they have trained and on leashes. Uh, and they are sort of like watching that gate via like they like like a hawk basically um and they uh they have um there's a deep gnome sort of shouting orders at them sort of making sure that they are uh, attentive and, and getting ready uh standing behind them and then uh so if you guys want to stop i'm just assuming you're walking towards the diggermatics yeah mm -hmm. uh, 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 let me just make sure I, I get the right place. Yep. Okay. So eventually you come through here, down, and up to uh, Digramatic Hall. Um, so give me one second. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, you walk in. They're behind. Remember, they had the two desks that face each other, Senny and Dorbo. Uh, and they're they're sitting there at their desks. Uh, lots of aides coming in and out. Um, and I think Dorbo probably catch like he re realizes you're in the hall. And he says, oh, you, how are you guys doing? Um, I heard you, uh, you helped clean up that mess in the, the market. We appreciate that. Okay. You're welcome. How are things going? You know, typical day. Um, just trying to, trying to find more space to expand the city. Yeah. Are we... Don't go east. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we're going to have to go east. We keep getting more and more people settling here. Yes. Well, um, I think uh, we may have found uh, a solution to two of your problems, that being the oozes and the other, uh, your conflict well, that, with that's, the wear rats. At, at this point, Seti looks up too. She's like, a solution? Yeah. Um, all right. We're all ears. Well, um, just so we're all aware of the magnitude of the situation, uh, it is our belief that these oozes are under some control of a possible demon lord. Hmm. And the two of them look at each other. Uh, and Cindy's like, um, so there's a a demon lord here? Like, Our, like not the ones you already read because you told them. No, no, story. no, no, yeah, no. Another one, yes. Uh, Why whether, doesn't it just, uh, it's a demon lord. Why doesn't it just destroy us? Maybe not ready. Yeah, so they may, this demon lord may not be here at this exact moment, but certainly in the process of arriving, at the very least, but, the, but it may yet be prevented. Yes, 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 exactly. Thank you, Jason. Mm. Uh, it can be prevented. And uh, the solution, or at least part of it, uh, comes from the werewolves, the werewolves. Mm. And yeah. what, what, like we, we, we feed them to the slimes? What? 
no, 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 nothing, nothing quite so crass. Um, no, uh, they would like um, an amnesty of sorts, a, a, a peace treaty. They would like to be considered uh, inhabitants of the city as well. But they're like they're diseased. Um, what they say is that big disease will kill city called slime disease. You need their help to stop. And they're right. That's the uh, important thing. What, what, right. what sort of help are they proposing? They can take us to the being who is fueling these slimes currently. Yeah, you know, the and pudding we don't king. Have, we don't have the capability to, tr to get to him ourselves. Um, so in... Um, in you see, I have to find the description of this guy because he's awesome. He's also in the room. Give me one second. Um, let's see. Uh, Sorry, I'm just looking for. You see, um, it, it. You don't see him at first. In fact, much like Jasa, incredibly well hidden. Except you realize when he steps forward, the reason he's well hidden is because he's a ghost. And he steps forward, and he is dressed in like immaculate military garb. Um. And uh, he he sort of walks up to the Digger Maddox or walks through a bunch of other people to get to the Digger Maddox. And uh, he says, um, if, if what they say is true, we need allies. Uh, and uh, Senna looks a little annoyed. She had the problem with the ghosts that this guy's here. Um, and uh, he, um, uh, Derbo is like, um, hmm. um, uh, Senna, can you, can you come here for a minute? And they, they sort of, she gets up and they walk over to a corner of the room and you see them sort of discussing somewhat intently between the two of them. Uh, the ghost seems to have no problem sort of following and floating on over there as if he's part of the conversation. Um, and uh, which annoys Dorbo to no end, but there's literally nothing he can do because he's a ghost. And so uh, Dorbo comes back, Senna sort of following a little bit behind him. And uh, Dorbo says, "We're gonna we're gonna have a city council meeting about this tomorrow. Um, uh, you can you can tell um, your where we're at friends." And he says it a little derisively. Um, that they will be allowed to have a representative or two join the city council so that we can discuss this as a group. Um, and they would have your word that they would not be harmed. Uh, of, yes, indeed. Um, I, will, I will call for others who I think might be um, allies in this. Uh, and we will see if we can come to some sort of solution about what to do if you say this threat is so dire. And we do. Mm. But, I um, believe it very well may be. So he says then, at midday tomorrow, we shall meet uh, here. Um, the, and how they, how they know they'd be safe. They seem scared to come in here. They well, did say if, if the Diggermatics gave their word that they would come. And they, they have our word. But no harm shall, assuming they don't do anything dangerous or attacking, no, no harm will come to them. Uh, we, we, we look forward to the information they have and what, what they might be able to provide us. Very 
a while. Oh, we will uh, convey this message. Uh, you see Durbo go over and go to um, an aide and sort of start giving taskers out to the aide. And uh, the aide gets out a little piece of paper and Durbo's like literally going through first this, second this, like see him counting his fingers. And the aide eventually starts to go to like sub aides who then start running off to the various areas various areas in the city. Um, what would you guys, is there anything else you'd like to do with the diggermatics? Mm. Look at there. I don't think so. I don't have anything. They, they have dinner plan? <laughs> we should head back to uh, <laughs> friend that I didn't meet. Yeah, we still need to convey the message. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so as you are walking out, the uh, the ghost actually follows you. And he says, I, I, I'm very sorry. I, I didn't get a chance to introduce myself or to meet you. I am Burl Warden Jadger. Hello. Hello, Burl Warden. Um, very it's a, wise back it's a, there. What'd you say? I said you were very wise back there. Uh, the defense of the city is my my uh, my duty. For a long time. Uh, yes. Um, uh, it's been it's been a while. Um, uh, the. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying, trying to piece together some stuff about Chuck here. Um, uh, I do what I can to make sure the the young Srifneblin in the city know how to defend their city. Cool. Um, we have question. You you dead? Yes. Yes. But that is you, accurate. But you not just gone. You you this? Why? This is not uh, uh, because normal. I still have to defend the city. Apparently, I do not know. I work long day. I take break. Eventually, my days end. Why your days no end? I had not anticipated this level of self awareness amongst the ghosts. I eat uh, things. I'm. I know what things I eat to walk around and talk to me. Are all of the ghosts in the city as aware? Uh, I wouldn't say so. Some are quite insane, hmm. if you had to ask me. In fact, um, and he says, uh, uh, where is it? Um, uh, So he, um, he says some seem to be trapped in sort of a cycle, like their daily cycle. Um, most want to be left alone uh, and, and to live their afterlife, I suppose. Um, they, they seem in, in, to have a purpose and maybe that purpose isn't as important as defending the city, but they seem to have a purpose. Um, some, uh, their bones have not been interred properly. And so I send some of the youth to try to find those as they can. Um, so it just depends, I would say. For me, I died defending the city and I seem to still be here to help defend it. Well, that, I get it. Yeah, you're what, good at something. Why, uh, why let that go just on a technicality? Because he ain't sucking in air anymore, you know. Uh, it seemed like <laughs> vacation. You take break, lay burden down. Uh, that's no. Uh, I can take a break when the city's safe. If a burden needs to be transported and there isn't someone to pick it up, you can't put it down. The the comment he made about dying uh, would give you a 
the all a hint to his age. He's hundreds of years old. So Sometimes you need to give up jobs so next generation get job. Back where I'm from, my big problem was I want job, but old lizards still living, they'll give me job, then they get rid of me. Maybe you oh. go away, others take your job. Well, if someone comes properly trained, I will gladly give up my 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 title as the head of the the bar borough warden. Um. So I, I, I assume you're still. This is all happening while you're walking. Basically, yeah, yeah. He's um. I mean, he quite easily. Like you see him pass through things. Like so, like. You guys have to walk around things, and he just he's able to keep speed with you quite quite efficiently. And he says, um, uh, "Any chance I can um, uh, ask you to take care of one of my um, past city mates?" You can of course ask. Um, so. Vazuk, uh, he was a good man, but the years of grief of losing his whole family have drove him a little mad. And um, he's one of the few who needs to be helped to go on to a new place. And, and as you say, to, to lay down his burden. Uh, and he, he points, let's see if I can this he zook is sort of down near the end let's say he points like you, you, you've been in that area and you just haven't seen this ghost in particular um and he says uh um i'm afraid i'm afraid he's the threat to the to the living citizens and so something needs to be done so when you say take care i grew up in a kind of a rough rough place when we say take care of someone it doesn't really mean like a really nice thing or what, what exactly are you saying um i mean it could it could mean something not nice um he um just the other day he hurt us one of the 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 children in town uh who wandered in uh seemingly on a dare into his house because they all know about Old man Vazuk. Um, the child was in a unconscious for two days before we were able to rouse him. So, if you can get rid of him, he's not. I, I I'm not offended if that's what you're asking. He's he's not the Vazuk that lived before the war. This is something twisted and and unfortunate. Yeah. Any means necessary to get him to move on. Yeah, if there's if there's a of course if there's a better way to to help him, I I would love to love to see my old friend, but I fear there's not. What were um? Pardon me if I missed this, but what were the circumstances around his death? Of Azuks? Yeah. Uh he he died when when the drow and he spits, and his spit is a little like ethereal mist. But instead of hitting the ground, just sort of poofs cloud. Uh, um, he died, uh, uh, came home, found his family already murdered by the drow, sort of just went on a crazed rampage. Mm -hmm. um, that sort of anger, blind rage, doesn't, doesn't necessarily do anyone good. He, he basically got himself slaughtered. Um, he says uh, he mentions that uh, as you're walking through let me find this um, pretty sure he normally is yeah he says uh, I, I spend a lot of time in the catacombs under the ruby and the rough uh, and as you're walking through that temple area, and he points to those catacombs, and 
and he says, uh, if you uh, if you take care of it, uh, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Uh, you probably see me around town. Um, and then he says, uh, he sort of says quietly uh, to you, and he's like, and if you don't want any of these deep gnomes who you think might, you know, be a good one to help the city, um, let me know. And he says with sort of a mysterious wink to you. And then he sort of wanders off down to those catacombs as you're walking. How, how we find you when we need you? He says he tends to hang out in those catacombs mm -hmm. under, under the, the temple area. So, oh yeah. um, it is 8.30, so why don't, or 8.30 my time. So why don't we take a break here? Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, and you, we will continue walking out to the to the Gold Whisker Clan, and then we will uh, figure out what's next. So, thank you. Uh, welcome back, guys. Um, so, uh, you guys, uh, unless you have anything in between, you guys are headed out uh, to see uh, Chip Tooth and uh, the Were Rats again. Is his name Chip Tooth? Chip. Did I chip get that tooth. wrong? With a P, Chip. Right. Yeah. Uh, chip Grin, sorry, not Tooth. Chip Grin. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, so are you doing anything before you go out again? No, but I will not hide. Okay. So uh, you, um, the, the guards, they, they don't, it's not really shade. They're just amazed that three gates have opened today. Like, that's a lot in their sort of thing they open the gates um and uh as as sort of like you start your eyes get adjusted to the darkness as you're looking as they're opening the gates and you start to see crack you can see in the distance some uh you know light reflecting off where rat eyes sort of around the corners and you you push out through the gate and there's a, a group of where rats ready like just greeting you and, and curious um, and you all walk back up to the uh, the main area where you were. And uh, Chip Grin is uh, he says uh, that that was pretty fast. Well, we you have good point. I'm glad I'm glad he thought that. Um, and we have his word that I'll come under no harm. He said you and I think two others could come. He said two total. Yeah. But to two. And he says, I'll, I'll, I'm fine going, going by myself. Uh, I assume you'll, you'll be there as well. Yes. I, I would hope you would, just to make sure that nothing weird happens. That would be our intention. So then, uh, I guess tomorrow at noon it is. He um uh, he I'll show you this area a little bit more just so you can see what's over here. And then um uh, uh so there's this big big area that's the this living area. And this is where you see like you're not sure the exact number, but there's probably between 40 to 60 were rats up here. Um, and so they've established their homes up there. Still a little filthy, um, but it's it's definitely like there's they have warrens where they live and whatnot. So is there I went on this side of the gate, is there anything you guys want to do? No, I can't think of anything. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> you guys pass back into the city. Uh, we'll say now between everything, it's roughly it's late afternoon. So is there anything you want to do uh, before sort of the meeting tomorrow? 
you can explore the city some more. You can. We could guess, help the ghost guy. You can yeah. deal with ghost thing. Let's go help the ghost. What? Um, all right. At least go check that out. So you um you you start to get down to this area, um and you recognize this area. Uh, was it? I think it was Vic who saw the singer, the the singing stones. Yes. Okay. So you're you're roughly in that area where the singing stones were. And uh, you start to ask some around uh, some of the the uh, the gnomes, and particularly the gnomes' kids. They're all able to point exactly where old old man Bazook lives, uh, and they the sort of haunted house on the end of the street. And so uh, you start to approach it, and it's a simple dwelling, not fixed up at all, so still look pretty ruined, um, and. Uh, Um, you uh, you see, it's just sort of a a dark, unfixed house. What are you guys doing? So we think in this house is oh entry to some place. I, I missed sort of the connection of what the house is. I think this is so where the Mazook is. This is yeah. This is Vazook's house. This is where he's been haunted. And like mm-hmm. anyone who comes near it seems to get hurt. The little Isn't... kids use it as like a dare, like, oh, I bet you can't run into that house. But he haunts the house. This isn't his house. It was his house. Haunted. Okay. It was, it was his, his house. house. All right. I got those kind of confused. Yeah, it was his house where he found his family dead. Well, um, before we go in, I do... I've been learning a, a spell from the spell book. Um, perhaps one of you would like to receive it. It is a, a protection of sorts from from ghosts. Perhaps one who would be willing to negotiate. Or I don't know. What do you do with I, ghosts? I think it would be good of us to enter into this with the idea that perhaps we could put him to rest without violence. But yeah, understanding sure. that perhaps it may not be possible. Indeed. Well, um, Rick, and you if have anyone, with birds. <laughs> exactly. If anyone can talk a ghost to peace, it might be Vic. Yeah, perhaps this may help. Um, I'm going to cast protection from evil and good on Vic. Okay. I don't feel any different, but I, I, I trust it's there. Going on here. Okay. Um, sorry, just trying to look something up. Wait, what? Got a not authorized in roll 20. That's weird. I got that earlier. Did you? Yeah, or when I tried, to, I tried to follow the old link to this game. Uh, but then I was able to load it when I just went to roll twenty and went to my games. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Got it. Uh, maybe I gave him his own. But I am going to try to uh, once again go stealthy as the rest group goes up to this place. So yeah, so it's just, I mean, it's its pretty simple. Uh, the walls are like, there's a couple windows that no longer have any sort of barrier in the windows. So like, and then there's the main door, not a big place. Uh, and most of the walls have sort of fallen through. You don't really see, um, uh, you don't see anything inside. I'll, uh, I've got this this protection spell. I feel pretty good about that. I'm feeling a little okay. bit bolder than maybe I would without it. So Vic mm-hmm. is going to go up to the front door and knock. 
Okay. Uh, you hear some movement from inside when you knock. And then almost immediately you hear um, mine, my stuff, not yours. Uh, and I need everyone to roll initiative. Please. Uh, and Jason, we can assume you are hidden. Uh, someone was a click, so draws it. Thank you. Okay, um, Vic, you. You, can you make for me a strength check? Who you ask that of? To Vic. Okay. All right. So Vic, you feel like force around you and you feel the urge to be flung backwards where you're able to fight it off. Oh, um, spells work and dull fix. You see nothing in front of you. Like you don't know what just did that. Uh, Vazook? It is, oh. It is uh, your turn. Uh, Vazook, just here to talk. I should warn you, I am using protection. We're just here to talk. Just calm down. We're 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 no friends of the drow. We just want to talk. You just hear sort of a howling start to pick up and sort of that like you see dust and little rocks start to roll out of the building. We you we know else? we know what happened to you. What this is this is understandable, your rage and your anger. But people are being hurt. It's terrible what happened to your family, but it's no reason to uh, per perpetuate that onto other people that had nothing to do with it. Um, Drazzle, and anyone else who has religion trained, you mm -hmm. can make me a quick religion check. I only know Drazzle because it's clear. Yeah. We don't want to get it. So Drazzle, um, based on everything you're seeing right now, um, you you don't think ghost best describes this thing. You think this is like full on specter poltergeist sort of thing, and everything in your religious training that. Those are the no longer sa savable spirits. Like, those are the ones who are beyond redemption of any kind. This uh, this one too far gone, Vic. I think. Particularly as we saw, like, Vic shuddering in the doorway. We need, and then now the stuff flying out. We need to put this to rest ourselves, not ask him to go on his own. Hmm. Um, with that, uh, I guess I'll just use a, a bonus action. I'll say, Drazzle, you're trained in this. Um, I'm going to, well, we're going to need your help, uh, your expertise. Maybe there's something that you know as to how to, how to put these things to rest. I'll give him a bardic inspiration. Okay. We, we don't have ghosts. We eat our dead. Well, uh, invite them to a feast. I don't know what you got to do, but let's get this done. Uh, Drazzle, it's your turn. Uh, what would you like to... 
I'm assuming you're just a little bit off from the doorway of the house, but yeah. you can easily get into it if you needed to. And so people that go in get hurt, but nobody outside the home has gotten hurt before. It's un unclear. Okay. Unclear to you. It, it sounds like this was a menace to people in the neighborhood, no matter what. Um, how big is the interior space of the that I can see? Maybe like 30 feet or so. All right. Um, I was going to take a chance and cast fairy fire into that space okay. to see if I could maybe yeah. let him up. Okay. Uh, DC dexterity, so we'll be clumsy ghost. Oh yeah, perfect. All right. So you see um, Vazook's form, and it just is. Can you give you a Vazook? Step one in ghost fight: find ghost. Yeah. Um, it it is a um, like this a theory like very wispy shape with just bright red eyes and the the, the what whatever color you pick for your fairy fires and just like really for whatever reason it seems like the fairy fire is wrapped around the eyes and yeah. uh, it just looks with anger and sort of the you know the, the very angry growl at you but now you can see it and Vic it is literally right next to you um Jason. Uh, well, I can see uh, what is going on, and I've heard this conversation. Um, can I see the thing as well? Yeah, yeah, it's very powerful. Okay. So. Um, well, then I'm going to draw the the magic short sword and close in behind it. Okay. And attack. Go for it. Um, all right. Um, that hits. For 25 uh, points of damage. So yeah, you oh. you <laughs> you slash into it and uh, you start to see like the strands of it just unraveling. Uh, and and it, it its eyes are still there, and you can still feel the the breath and the anger coming, or the whatever that is coming out of it. But you have seriously heard it. Then I will bonus action disengage and back away. Okay, Adolphix. I will take my plus two short sword and try to hit it um, with booming blade. Okay. That hits. We're at, are we at advantage? So I don't, so this is a, I, I play you or not because it's still invisible. It's just very fine. Okay. Right. So you would have disadvantage because it's invisible and then you'd have advantage because it's very fire. But I'm willing to like, okay. if you guys read that in a different way. Oh, that's fine. But, um. but even so, you, you were going to, you, you, you managed to like, sever whatever was holding the, those angry eye bubbles and you see them pop and sort of start to drift away and everything turns very very quiet the wind that sort of uh vic you were feeling gone i'm continuing to concentrate in case he's you know slipped away <laughs> doesn't seem to be anyone around Well, poor Vazuk, I hope your soul finds rest Maybe. in the life after the life after life. Maybe there is something in house now we could bury. Are you going into the house? Yeah. Probably um, good to look for remains. You um you just find a lot of rubble. Uh, if you want to search the rubble, you can make the investigation check. I would do that. 
forgot I'm not as good at this. So uh, you look around a fair bit. Uh, you don't, unfortunately, you don't find any remains. Like, and and the stuff like there hasn't been anyone in here since probably three centuries, right? So any any wood is it's pulverized the minute you pick it up. Like it just falls to dust. Uh, and unfortunately, you just don't see any remains. Um, but based on the story you heard, he upon finding his family dead, he left this place and went out and got himself killed. So it would it would make sense if the remains were not here. Um, you seem to have, you see little kids, little gnome kids sort of staring at what you're doing in awe that you've walked into old man Vazook's house and lived. Lesson to children, learn magic. Yeah, I never did. Oh. Um, so Vazook seems to uh, have been taken care of rather easily. So thanks to Fairy Fire. Those catacombs and find our friend. Heading over there. Um, uh, okay. So, um, Jadger uh, is uh, incredibly thankful that you did that uh, when you come back. He, um, you see, hold on a second, I just need to find. Where this is at. Um, so when you go down into um, uh, the catacombs, um, so I'm just looking for something. Um, as you start to walk down into the catacombs, you can hear actually the sound. It's, something is going on down in the catacombs. Like, you hear metal on metal, you hear grunts. And our ghost friend is with us? No, you, you haven't, you're going down to find oh, him specifically. Okay. But you do, you do hear, like, there seems to be activity going on down here. Do you guys continue? Yeah, I mean, we're not surprised that there's activity yeah. in the catacombs, are we? Uh, a little bit. Like you wouldn't have thought. You're not. You're really not sure what it. Like it's not a place that people go. Maybe it's a ghost party. So it's a dead it's, man's party. It's, it's a ghost speakeasy. Mm -hmm. um, no one needs to sleep. <laughs> All right. You guys. That's pretty done. cool. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you you go down and as you get closer and the the catacombs are like it was clear they were built in parts so like they buried some dead they realized they had no more space so then they dug into a different area and so it's it, it sort of branches out but it's pretty easy based on the sound just to follow where you'd go and as you get closer and closer you can see um one section in the back is lit uh and you hear the distinct sound of sword fighting going on down there mm, the show has started um, i might slip into the shadows okay. <laughs> uh are the rest of you approaching i think our guy I, that we're coming to meet is a protector so he's either practicing or he's defending so i think maybe it's good we all try to slip in quietly So you are approaching, but you're doing it stealthily. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as you as you sort of turn a corner, uh, you see there are not ghosts. There are young Swift Nibblin practicing with swords under the tutelage of 
uh, jet beard. And uh, you see him sort of observing with his, his ghostly arms cross. Uh, and, uh, um, and it's very obvious that amongst the gnome youth, there is like the, the semi superstar one um, that he's, he's watching with a close eye. Uh, but eventually he, uh, yeah, it, it seems like it's a training session of kinds. Um, Drazzle, not Drazzle, Dolphix. I'm Dolphix. Scott Strazzle. Um, unless you've been possessed. I'm Ethan. I've been possessed. He's Scott. Yes. Um, Pogo, Dolphix, you are not Ethan. Little D. You just can make this harder. This yes. is why we do introductions to the demon. I, I gotta tell myself. I am Ethan. Um, Dolphix is gonna hold a hand up to uh, the rest of his companions just to like, uh -huh. hang back a bit. Um, but like Dolphix is really into this. Like this is okay. bringing back memories of when he was training um, the youth of the noble family that he was employed with. Okay. Um, I I think he 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 has a good enough eye that he also spots the star pupil mm -hmm. right away. Um, I think uh, he kind of watches for a bit, and then when he notices like something isn't a, a good enough technique, he might just step in. I, he, he he will step in and like correct go, basically yeah he'll go up to the kid and he's like no 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 you you just position your shoulders a little more to the side here like so yep and I take out my rapier and like kind of just tip him and I, I'm back in like teacher mode right now okay um, and then I'll I'll do like a little little drill with him too uh Jed Jedgar is incredibly exciting I mean excited and he um uh, he calls the other students around and he says, we, we have a, a guest instructor today uh, and he has you and his star pupil, who is, uh, goes by the name of Trask, I believe. Uh, you and Trask are um, sort of like not fighting, but demonstrating, right? Like, yeah, and, as yeah. you, and you can help them demonstrate. And all the rest of the pupils have sort of sat in a circle around with their swords, their short swords on their, their laps as they sit uh, as you watch and, and Jadgar is incredibly um, excited that you are offering to do this but also um, just you, you can tell that um, I mean it's, it's painfully obvious to you all that he seems to be trying to reestablish this defense force mm -hmm. it, it's like, having an impact on him emotionally here I'm sure yeah, like it, it means, yeah, and and so any help he can get to defend the city, like that's his. Okay. His yeah. One track ghost mind. Okay. So and and then I guess as that's going on, um, uh, if Jagar has like input and stuff, um, as as we're demonstrating these skills, mm -hmm. Drazzle notices. I keep saying Drazzle now. Why? We. You want to be me? I want to be him now. Well, next, you're gonna um, be. Him bringing up lunch in every conversation yeah no, that's the no next. next next week i'll take that's next right. week i will assume the persona of jason just you wait. um it's a Dolphix. different de demon lord the one who yes. wipes your identity yep uh Dolphix looks over at jake Gar and says um uh perhaps the uh the instructor would like to demonstrate um and uh he Dolphix kind of like switches his rapier to give it to the to the ghost of course the ghost cannot wield so he kind of right dolphix is like raising his eyebrow as in like with a smile um are you doing it to, to embarrass him. him or are you doing it to joke no. with him like what uh, the, the intention is he is offering uh jedgar to possess dolphix's body in order oh, to demonstrate um uh, okay techniques uh, in order to interact with the students basically. let me see what Jedgar actually is to see. Um, so um, Jedgar uh, is a demon. <laughs> Jedgar <laughs> is duplex. Ah, oh, shit! Gotcha. Uh, our, our campaign has come to an end, guys. So no, uh, hell no, so, I'm running. So, um, so you do. I would say you do see like. I think. Jadgar probably doesn't possess you. Jadgar actually, you feel 
your sword suddenly lighten and Jadgar disappears and Jadgar is able to basically like possess the sword and the sword starts to dance um, and you can hear Jadgar's voice still uh, and it's a bit unusual um, uh, as he goes to um, to fight with his to practice fight with his his pupil um, and you can hear him say like he starts talking about like one of the hardest forms of uh, of combat is when you can't see your opponent. And so you can't anticipate, you can't see the subtle actions and how they're about to move or the feints they're gonna make and things like that. And so all you have to do is concentrate on the sound of their weapon and, and use other senses than you normally do. Uh, and you do, you are um, nowhere near as good at, as you or Jedgar, but you are uh, aware that this pupil is actually pretty, pretty decent. Um, and uh, and the other students are sort of like in awe that uh, this is going on. Uh, eventually, you feel the, the the sword sort of hover back over to you towards your hand, uh, and you touch it, and you you feel the weight sort of release into your hand again. And Jedgar sort of sort of uh, apparates near you, um, and he 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 gives a bow and a nod, um, and uh, he yeah. Um, and the lesson sort of naturally concludes at that point. So um, he uh, he welcomes, the, he sees the other three of you, sort of, and uh, he welcomes the three of you and he says, uh, um, I, I, I didn't expect to see you um, so soon, so thank you. Um, were you able to, to um, handle poor uh, Vusek? I can't remember his name now. Sorry. Vazuk. 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 He was uh, too far gone. We put his spirit to rest. Uh, he said, uh, I, I feared it's probably a few hundred years too late for him. Um, so thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and he says, and and thank you, um, uh, Dolphix, for for your help. Um, I've not told the diggermatics that I've done this yet. Um, I prepare, plan to to train some of them, and then show their effectiveness, sort of, rather than to announce to propose it and get denied. Um, I don't think. The diggermatics understand how useful they can be. Um, they they rely too much on their guards in the city. I'm sorry. I'd appreciate if the the, the group of you keep this a little bit secret until we're ready to to do this. Um, Marsh, yeah. I think it is valuable for for anyone of any age to be able to defend themselves. Uh, he says, absolutely. Um, he, uh, he, um, the borough wardens had great honor amongst the Swift Neblin. Uh, and Ethan, I, or, or Dolphix, I would say that specifically the, that, the title borough warden is not something like, you know, that title in the sense of like the elite fighting force of a Swift Neblin organization is called a borough warden mm. um and so it's not it's not that weird that this place would suddenly have one again um but it, uh and you have an experienced ghost who can teach them to do to do it so um it is an honorable thing yeah and it's just my honor to be somewhat of a little part to play in I think he, a piece of your culture he invites you back to um whenever um uh, whenever you wish to, to help them out. And I think uh, Drazzle, he probably comes to you and he says, um, he says, with any luck, uh, and he he sort of nods over to the uh, the star pupil who is getting, uh, like clean, grabbing his things and changing out of leather armor. Um, he says, with any luck, he'll be the one who can finally take my burden. Good. He, uh, 
He doesn't need to die to take your burden. Yes? <laughs> I hope not. No, I, I plan for this new unit of Burrow Wardens to, to be living. Perhaps I'll just be a, you know, an advisor of sorts. You have tricks to fight slime? Do I have tricks to fight slime? Um, they fought slime in my day, but it was nowhere near as bad as it is. I don't have anything I can offer special, except depending on which slime you're fighting, sometimes fire, sometimes ice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sometimes it can backfire. Um, well, uh, he, uh, he sort of floats over and talks to the, the students like you your every sense is you get is he's a pretty good teacher and uh so he and you hear him giving advice to to students as he floats around and so um is there anything else are there things you'd like to accomplish i i sort of set next day noon but uh just as a sort of placeholder um he's he will gladly ask you to do other tasks. Other people in town will gladly ask you to do other tasks. Um, so it's really up to you what you would like to do. If you'd like to lay low over the next period. Um, we we didn't. Do we have anything else that he wanted us to do specifically? He he has one other like he 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 has not asked you or I have not mentioned that he's asked you yet. Uh, um, but if you if you do he if you do sort of inquire he um, he seems like a good source of information like if he knows where there's a problem at if nothing else that tells us maybe don't go there yeah, or if we he, find ourselves next to it watch out so you he does say there's a there is an internment that needs to happen of one of the ghosts and that internment the bones are in rock blight. So you have the, the Warrens, which is where the, um, the where rats are. That's to the Northwest. To the Northeast is all the slimes. The rock Warrens are actually to the Southeast. It's probably behind the gate that you saw everyone mounting up behind. Uh, and he said, there's a, there's a set of bones there of a ghost that need to be interred. Uh, he understands other things are going on <laughs> like and so that might not be your priority but he says he of course if you have um the the interest he would appreciate it if we find ourselves there i think this is something we could do but i, I don't know how far that is and how much time we have between this and our big meeting it's a uh, yeah. It's like I said. It's over in that area that is. Uh, you saw the the badgers and the, the big group of guys. It's still the night before, right? Yeah, and it's not even night. Like it's yeah. it's like okay. Uh, it's late afternoon, early evening at most. I'm feeling pretty effective. I think we could go solve a second thing. Help help our new friend. Huh. Yeah, if we got time to kill. So there are, I'll move you over there so you can see. There are a couple gates that lead into this area. There's this one where you saw all the, the groups. Um, and then there's two smaller ones down here. You can see where I'm pointing. Uh, let me just tell you what's an 11. Oh, this is the down in the southeast is all the metal workers. So like as you go in there, you can feel the heat rising from the forges, but you also just hear clanging and it's and so the people call this the hall of clatter because of that. Um, and there's two gates that lead to um, the area to the east. Um, you are warned as you talk to some of the guards about what's back there. You are warned. Let's find this. You are warned that behind those doors somewhere is a Medusa. Not the biggest threat tends to leave the city alone, 
but they recognize that in order to clear that part of the city, they are going to have to eliminate the Medusa. They did manage, though, to do something uh, fairly, you would say fairly impressive. This is this is the area of the city they plan to inhabit next, like that they plan to move into. So the Medusa is sort of the, the big obstacle to that. They did manage to at least collapse all the hallways leading into the area to the slime. Slimes go through the avalanche, but it's some form of protection. Uh, that that it's not unlike the the wear rats which are wide open to the slime this area actually is a little bit protected from uh, the big group of slime uh, and so uh, that's that's where the bones could be like that's where uh, Jedgar leaves the bones are to be interred and he gives you a rough description of the house that the the individual was living in so that you could find it. Okay. Where would you guys like which of those doors would you like to pass through? Kind of feeling like the uh Medusa might not be a afternoon delight. Yes, but uh, I believe we could we could take a Medusa on. Don't you think, Drazzle? I know, no, no about Medusa. Well, even so, I think we should select a door that is closest to our destination. And our based on based on everything he described, the northern door is going to be the closest. You think it's, it's basically in that area right beyond that door. All right. Let's say we go for it. Let's do it. Right. So the opening of these doors is a little bit more of a um, uh, production, uh, mostly because this guy who is the leader of the guards there is a little bit of a, a pompous guy uh, and cares about everyone's safety. Um, so the door is open. Uh, you guys are like basically pushed through, and then the door is abruptly closed behind you. Um, you are, um, uh, it's a huge, large cavern. Looks very similar to the residential areas you just walked through, except no fires, no warmth whatsoever. It's just cold and dank, but very, otherwise, very similar. Um, uh, echoes, all your steps echo everywhere. Uh, and you can hear the sound of a waterfall somewhere in the distance. Uh, and the air is, is cold and moist. You guys are, are here now. The waterfall is coming to the southeast. I think maybe let's uh, circle to the right. Hmm. Sure. Whatever direction gets us there. Uh, okay. Uh, if you mean going up here, where, which way? You talk in current comp compass directions, please. Uh, so south east. Okay. So southeast. So yeah, you as you approach, it, it, you get those of you with dark vision start to see it first. There's a waterfall down here, um, uh, and um, it, uh, it it uh, pours into a hundred foot diameter, ten foot deep pool that is, takes up most of that eastern cavern. Uh, on either end of the pool are two staircases that climb thirty feet uh, up to a cave. That or like a balcony that overlooks this cave, um, and you do see down in the the southernmost portion, you do see the described house that uh, you mentioned. All right. So you head down there, um, and it's it's it takes a few minutes of poking around amongst the little caves and the burrows, uh, and you do find in the middle of one of the um, you see a skeleton. Uh, the, the 
the there is a, the remains of a wooden bed, um, and you see the skeleton um, basically sprawled out with its hands under the bed, where where the bed used to be, and the rest of him sort of stretched out. To intern them, so you're gonna. He, he, they need to be brought back to the catacombs if that was. Oh, okay. yeah. Gotcha. So you're just gonna collect them and bring them back. That yep. Seems easy Good. enough. All right. So you grab them. Uh, grab the 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 bones. You do the best you can, and you throw them in a bag. Can I try to check the room and see if there's anything else in there? Um, you can make me a, um, a perception check. Or investigation. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, nothing particular pops out. Uh, a lot of rubble, a lot of. Um, what would you guys like to do? Would you like, is there anything else you'd want to do while you're on this side of the gate? Or are you going to go back? They said they want to come here, but they haven't come here yet to settle it. Yeah, I mean the oozes are a big right. They don't have any. They don't have any of the metal doors between this and the the slime side. Uh, but their bigger problem right now is there's seemingly a Medusa somewhere around here, which is why they can't even start on that project. We could. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to fight a Medusa, so I don't know if I want to go search around looking for it, or come up on it accidentally. Right. Well, you know, maybe a, I've gotten pretty used to not being able to see, so that part should be easy. Well, I don't think we need to go actively looking for it, <laughs> but if it happens to stop us on our way back to the door, are we just gonna? Kind of turn and head back to our way. The door. Yeah. Okay. Turn around. Um, and once again, like you do, like because of the lack of things here, you do. It is very, very um, echoey. Like so, like your the the sound of your footsteps carry uh, as you walk through the area. Uh, but you get back to the door. Uh, you have to bang on it a little while before uh, the guard captain opens it up, looks you over carefully to make sure that you're not in trouble, and then he lets you in. Uh, you head back, you and Tur, um, and uh, Jedgar is incredibly, incredibly thankful, uh, once again, uh, that you're doing this work, um, and for basically the people he lived with at the time of the war. Um, and he, uh, he says uh, that is... Uh, more than enough help for now. Uh, and he very much is preaches it. So I need all of you to make a group persuasion check. Man, I'm not rolling great. Well, let's double your last one. Um, <coughs> all right. Or maybe just double my last one. <laughs> Um. Uh, cool. All right. Um. Anything else? It's now like early evening, like not early evening, like mid evening, dinner time. Uh, heading back to the inn, or are you doing something? Somebody say dinner time. <laughs> dinner yeah. time. Yeah. Let's just eat. All right. Kind of like a social area where the people of the area get together and eat, like. Not quite a restaurant district, but no, there's the inn you were at where you ate the night before. I'd say night. we go there. We're treated very there's well. There's no real there. there's no restaurants here. It's not it's not by any means huge. Yeah. Um it's nice if you like the attention, and I do. So let's go. Alright. So you head over to uh the uh what was it called? It's called the foaming mug. 
Um, yeah, and it's uh, it's pretty lively. I think um, I think uh, um, people are aware of all the stuff you did in a single day. So, and they they're aware that you're staying here. So it 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 um, people come in and like. Vic, are you performing? Yeah, he would probably probably do that this evening. Stands for Vic make some coin. Yeah, and, and so you definitely like your fame is growing, not just for um, people are happy to have new music come through, but also because of all the stuff like from the market attack. So you see like uh, the sister of the guard who got attacked. Uh, she she stops them at some point. Uh, Jadger actually comes in and uh, goes to the bartender and drop, buys you some drinks, which put it on his tab, uh, and that seems to work. Um, and yeah, so uh, the you see the Digger um, uh You see Senna come in, but she looks... She comes in and she's like elated that you are performing. Like you can tell she's like happy for the joy and the the, the cheer and the camaraderie but you can tell that she is incredibly nervous and anxious on her face and so eventually she maybe stays a song and a half before wandering back and probably going back to work who is this the the two the two heads of the digger medics so senna, senna, and Dorbo. senna digger medic yeah Can we infer anything from that uh happy to see us but also no, uncomfortable it's, no, no, no. It seems more concerned about what's going to happen to the next day. Like more that she was trying to relax and she just, at the end of the day, could not. So, Dorbo was not, and they're married. There was not. The night before, when you all had dinner together, they were together, but now they're not. So, you would, you tack it up to her just preparing for whatever is going to happen tomorrow. There was uh, so, someone else that we talked to earlier that was like a guard, like the person that like initially like opened up the door. Mm -hmm. The sister was. of the yep, the sister of the guard who got swallowed by the uh, the gelatinous cube. Is she uh, is she around? Yeah, she came in. She came in specifically to like hang out with you guys, and she gave you an update on her brother. Sort of, you know, he's doing better, still needs to recover, but yeah, she intentionally. Just because you were helpful, would uh, would be okay if I reach hand in bag and pull out animal friend. Let's not do that. I feel bad that animal live in bag. It, it, the animals are are fine. Um, we don't need to upset absolutely everyone else. Okay. Um. Was there Alex? Was there something, or Vic? Was there something that you specifically wanted to? Uh, yeah, you know, at some point, maybe like in between performances, I might go strike up a conversation with her, and uh, you know, say, you know, Whew, uh, you were you were right about those tunnels. Uh, we, it, was, it was seems like feels like the longest one of the longest days I've had in a while. That's that's saying something because we've been down here in the underdark seeing all this crazy stuff. Uh, how was uh how was the rest of your your shift? Did you see anything unusual? Uh, she said uh no, it was more of the same. Um we had a a small ooze come in through the through the the collapsed tunnel, but easy easy to take care of. It wasn't like what you had to take care of just some fire and we were able to burn it off um we heard we we got word that you you guys are bringing in some of the were rats tomorrow yeah we we think there might be an opportunity there um you know uh mutual self-interest in dealing with this ooze problem i, I hope you know what you're doing well how do you how do you feel about that i mean i i think they they're out there for a reason. They they skulk around. I don't think they they can affect our children. I don't think it's wise to bring them in here. Uh -huh. well, what do you, you guys think? Know what uh, you're doing. Well, actually, you know, the borough warden Jagder there, he he was pushing pretty hard for this. Well, what do you think of his opinion? 
I mean, he knows hates. I mean, he. Have you ever talked to like your grandfather, and they start like every opinion of theirs with like, back in my day. That's him. He has a lot of opinions. Sometimes they have merit, and sometimes it just seems like an old guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we were talking with him, and he says, you know, if he felt that there was somebody in town that was up to the job, maybe he would pass on and let let the younger generation, you know, step up, uh, fill the role. He, anyone, anyone strike you as such a, a candidate for the for the job? Um, so I can ask around. Uh... What about you? I don't know. Um, amongst the guards, I mean, they're the best trained people we have. You wouldn't be interested in it? I mean, maybe. I'd have to learn a little bit more about it. <laughs> Sorry, then I'm blowing my nose while the story. Well, um, you know, think about it. Um, I think, I think, you know, I understand your complaint about he's He's old, he's antiquated. He does a good job, it seems like. It seems like he knows what he's doing, but um he's the longer he's around, he's not he's not allowing um someone new, some new ideas, a fresh perspective to fill the void. If yeah, somebody there's... somebody you th- could think of that would be a better fit, uh, let us know. We'd be happy to try to convince him that they're worthy. Well, that's I understand what you're, you're, I mean, I like, I like that idea. Um, I'll think it about it. I'll let you know. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, she clinks her glass against yours. Uh, and she says, uh, are you done singing for the night? No, I think I got a few more in me. I'll get back up there and Vic will Great. go like very overt with all of the the songs that he's doing uh, for the rest of the night will be all about like like the spirit of the youth and all that kind of <laughs> <laughs> forever young and yeah alpha bill. yep got it um all right so uh remind me this uh because i i will forget the next time i ask you to do one of those charisma checks you all have advantage just I will take a note here, but if someone can help me, remind me of that note. Um, okay. So uh, if there's nothing else to do tonight, what we'll do is we'll uh, take a long rest. And we will, uh, yeah. Um, dawn breaks. Uh, and I think probably uh, for the because of the, um, because this is your second night in like a relatively safe place, like you all sleep much better than you thought you were going to. And I think you all sort of just slept in a little bit. And so you wake up to the smell of um, the owner of the foaming mug, uh, Tappy. Uh, Tappy is uh, like, has cooked up like, you could smell cooking and good cooking coming from the kitchen. You wander down there and he has a huge spread. Uh, what seems to be like the most, like uh, a lot of food for the few of you. Uh, and he seems in particularly good spirits and he eventually lets on. He's like, last night was one of my best, best nights in years. Thank you guys. You guys are Bring it into the business for me. Um, is there anything you guys want to do before this meet in particular? Like from my point of view, the only, at some point, uh, you guys, while you're maybe having breakfast, you guys hear uh, the sound of sort of like 
someone in armor and metal coming up. And you see one of the guards enter, a little breathless, and they come up to you and say, uh, Derva, she sent me here. And he, he catches his breath and he says, um, one of the scouts, they saw uh, up in the, the, the tunnels near the slimes, they saw a, a Sref Niblin, like us, but he was out there. He was, he was crazy. He was just, he was walking around with the slimes. Like it was, we don't know who he is. He's the pudding king. I, I, I don't know what that means. That's, that's why you that's meet insanity. with rat people. The rat people say they know pudding king. Well, I, she just wanted me to let you know that there's someone up there and you, I, you asked her to, if she heard anything. Uh, and he uh, he runs off. Have we uh, have we had any conversation with like Eldath or um, Darren Darendel? Uh, they're there, so it's possible. Absolutely. Is there something you wanted to bring up specifically? Just like what what they're up to um, if they're they're fine how they are do they want to come with us um uh -huh. so yeah eldeth is i think eldeth is a little antsy like she wants to get out there um she has been um this whole time this whole she's been sort of like in this babysitter role for school for a while and then you know taking care of people and i think you have seen since stool left and darren dill's there She's taken a little bit of that role with him uh, since he seems to be traumatized by whatever happened in that period you, he was away from you. Um, so the, it's been um, uh, um, sort of latched to him, but I would, I would say at some point she probably like takes you she probably takes you two Dolphix aside. And she says, um, so I don't mean to concern you, but nothing Darren Dill says makes sense. Like, in, in what way? Uh, is it just nonsense or is it like, like brooding omen kind of nonsense? It's... Or is he actually just speaking gibberish? He said, no, he's speaking words. Um, she says, but I started thinking about it, and none of the places he's talking about exists. Oh. You got a none sample of... of... Um, I, I go back they, a couple chapters. Uh, they never existed, or uh, they... Yeah, I... I, 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 I Took some time to ask around here if anyone's ever heard of these places, um, and no. Um, so he talked about how you said to find them. Um, so he said, "Where is Dibble? Where do? There we go." So he said he was from the kingdom of Nelrindin, name in the high forest. Most places don't exist. Then he said he's a gold elf. Have you ever heard of a gold elf? I have um, heard a lot of things, but... Well, yeah. I got... I've heard of gold dwarves. So, I'm gold not... Gold coin. Um, he said, uh... Yeah. Like I said, I don't want to worry you but the more time I spend with him, the weirder it is. It's not like he's getting weirder. It's just I realize more and more that he seems to be talking nonsense. Hmm. Well, um, we're still working on our way to get out of here. Um, uh, I, you know, I hate to 
complicate things here with the Snurf Niblin by asking one of them to be play caretaker. Maybe maybe it is best if you stick with uh, Darendel at least try to he's document like, what he's saying. Uh, excuse me. She says, um, I, well, I, I don't think anything's wrong. Like I don't like he's still Darendel as we all know him. Like it's just when you actually listen to the things he's saying, it just doesn't add up. Oh, do you think he? And, Still compliant? Like, if we t- tell him to hang out here, you think he'll stick around? I, I think so. Um, Maybe it's just I, delusional. I, yeah, I think she she is quick to add that. And she says, I don't think, I think he believes what he's talking about. Like, I don't think he's lying. But those, it's nonsense. Yeah. It's just different than the words he was speaking when we first met him no i think the story has been pretty solid let's think about nonsense in this situation we're in an underground world in which demons from another realm are invading and taking control how much more strange is that than anything he has to say scratching his head a lot no not any like not like a real concern not like what's his name but well, this, this one makes a good point. I mean, there's many things that we don't know about this world. I mean, Darendel so, claims to be a elf prince transformed into a Quagnoth. And yeah, he that, speaks in an archaic style. Perhaps he comes from a different well. Maybe he's really old. Yes, for all we know. We, I, I, I know talk normal. You don't know places I know. Yeah, I but I think I'm very smart. Right. Uh, I, I guess it's nothing, man. Well, do you need a break from from all that? No, no, I mean... no, 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 no. I'm not like I, I'm fine. Like, uh, we don't mean to. Like... We don't mean to make light of your concerns. No, 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 no. I'm not like it's not. It's no problem at all. I just wanted to make you aware that I, 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 I truly don't believe these places exist. He's been a curious one from the start, but I don't think he's a danger to us. I don't no try. Like, I, I don't think nothing about him has changed. He's not, I mean, except for being sort of the things he lived through while we were separated from him. Of course. Well, this is good news that you bring it to us regardless. Any more information you can find would be helpful. Uh, I'll I'll keep listening. I mean, if I can I, if I can somehow prove to you that what he's saying can't possibly be true, I'll I'll do that. Ah, well, I don't know how friend, to if, prove a negative. Exactly. If if you can find a way to prove a negative, please come to me. I think you may have <laughs> stumbled onto quite the gold mine of a philosophical nature. Um. Oh. So the the morning rolls on and it comes time to this meeting probably the most interesting thing about the meeting is who's there so i think that's where we'll leave it tonight so uh you guys help the where rats uh uh chip grin get in and so you're walking with him and when you get there uh it's actually quite full the hall um there is uh let's get to the list Um, you see uh, the Digger Maddox, so both Chief Dorbo and Quartermaster Senny are there. Um, you see some individuals representing the Stoneheart Enclave, which is uh, a group who, sorry, um, uh, where is the Stonehearts? Uh, they are a group of spellcasters um, who focus on elemental earth magic uh, and so those are the ones you've seen around town some of the spell gems that they put into uh, the walls to protect as part of the protection of this area uh, you haven't run into them in town uh, because mostly they're working down in the mines getting those spell gems out of the earth so you see two people from them um, you see um, uh, a member, a uh, representative from the Miners Guild. Uh, Jedgar is there. Um, and Jedgar has brought 
Trisk, the star people with him. Uh, they're both there. Um, and then uh, Chip Grin. Um, and Seni opens the meeting by asking you particularly, but everyone to chime in with additional what you saw out there and what you heard particularly. So as you described that, you there are a lot of side whispers. There are a lot of like maybe nods of confirmation, like people had experienced the same sorts of things. Um, uh, and so it um, there is a a sense of sort of urgency slash tension as more and more of this uh, comes up. Um, and where we'll leave it um, at tonight, uh, because we'll have a good good place to start next time, is um, Seni, after you described how many oozes were out there and the fact that there's this pudding king running around, um, Seni says, um, I, I don't think we have to fight all of them. And I have an, a few ideas that I'd like to, to pass by you, how we, can, how we can use all, everyone assembled here to, um, to fix this. Um, and then she turns to the group of you and she says, um, but we really need your experience to pull this off. So we hope you would help us. Uh, and then she starts to describe her plan, which is where we will start next time and how to carry out this plan. So uh, thanks everyone for joining us. A uh, little bit of a, once again, trying to get a lot of pieces in place today. Uh, so we appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, 20 sides to every story. Uh, please, if you haven't already, join our Discord. Uh, if you uh, like what you saw um, and want to get involved with us, uh, our Patreon group offers a ton of options and uh, benefits, so please do that. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff, fun stuff coming up uh, tomorrow night. Uh, as Alex mentioned, we have uh, trivia starting at 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, On Saturday, right? It's tomorrow, right? Tomorrow night. It is tomorrow, okay. Yeah, yeah. tomorrow night, yeah. Um, uh, and so great time. Everyone's invited. Please join us. Uh, great prizes uh, and bragging rights. Uh, Saturday morning, we have I'll Be Back playing Oracle of War, the Adventurers League Everyone campaign uh, with a group of people. And then Saturday evening, uh, DM Dave is doing Kingmaker. The no, 5e. Uh, no Kingmaker okay. this week, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Uh, and there's no, um, no Cthulhu. All of Cthulhu either. So it's going to be a little bit of a well, things will probably be in those sessions. Uh, we just don't have anything planned at the moment. Uh, and then our whole week starts over next week. So uh, thanks for joining us. And we will uh, see you. We'll be, we will be back next week. So this same time. So we'll see you then. Thanks, thanks Corey. Thank you. Hey.